Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about capacitors in series and in parallel. So we'll start off with just discussing a capacitor with a known value and what happens to it when it's placed in series with another capacitor of the same value. Okay, here's a single capacitor. Its value is 47 nanofarads. And just so you know, all a capacitor is, is two conductive plates separated by an insulator. So it could be air, it could be mylar, it could be anything. Anyway, we'll get back to that at the end of the video just in case you're curious about why certain things work the way they do. Anyway, moving forward. So I have one capacitor with a known value. Of course, it measures to be that value. Now, if I take another capacitor and place it in series with this one, so we've added a second capacitor which has the same value as C1. So they're both 47 nanofarads. Now, if I were to take a meter to measure the capacitance from point here to point here, the value would be 47 divided by 2. So we'd be left with 23.5 nanofarads. Now, let's go measure that on the bench, just so you know I'm not lying. So we'll call this one C1 and we'll call this one C2. So right now I'm measuring across just C1, so we can see it's at 47.6 nanofarads, and if we switch over to measure across C2, now this one's a little higher, it's at 49.1. So they're not quite exactly the same, but they're pretty close. So if I measure the entire capacitance, so the two capacitors in series, we can see that the capacitance is now 23.92 nanofarads. So pretty close to what I was calculating. All right, now let's do some parallel analysis here. All right, this time around we have C1 and C2 in a parallel configuration. And again, they are 47 nanofarads each. So the value of these two would be 47 times two. So that would be 94 nanofarads. So let's go ahead and measure that as well. All right, here we are again with the same capacitors. So this one's 47.6 and this one is 49 nanofarads. And if I take the two and I place them in parallel, like so, and I place one lead on this side and the other lead on the other side. And here we are at 96.8, so very close to what I calculated. All right, now let's talk about why that is. So when it comes to capacitors, there are three aspects which determine how much capacitance there will be within a certain capacitor. So the first one being the dielectric material. The second being the distance between the plates or the thickness of the dielectric material. And thirdly is the area of the conductive plates. And here is the formula for calculating the capacitance of a given capacitor. So the only two things we're gonna focus on are the area and the distance. So the area being the area of the plates and the distance being the distance between the plates or the dielectric thickness. So Knowing that, we can see that if the area increases, the overall capacitance will increase. And if the distance between those plates increases, the overall capacitance will go down. So if I were to place another capacitor in parallel with this one, all right, now we have two capacitors in parallel. Now you can see how really all they are is just one capacitor. And now you can see that the area has doubled. So now we have twice the surface area of the conductive plates. Therefore, our capacitance has doubled. The distance did not change, that has remained the same. Now let's take a look at two capacitors in series. All right, now we have two capacitors in series. Now the area didn't change. We still have the same amount of surface area. But what did change is the distance. Now we have two 
of these as opposed to just one. And assuming they're the same value, that has just increased by two or has been multiplied by two. So now we have half the capacitance that we did when we started with just the one. So that's how you can think about capacitors in a physical manner that will help you understand immediately what occurs when you have them in series or in parallel. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.